Hi students, uh, today I want to define for you um, what a midterm is. So we've had quite a few chances to construct truth tables, so let's look at um, how these are actually made. So suppose I have three inputs A, B, and C, and let me just do the first few entries of my truth table. Um, if my input is F, um, what conditions do I need in order for F to be true in this case? Well, I need F to be the function A0 and B0 and C0. And the reason why is because I'm going to need, um, in order for us to have a 1 here, I need A to be 0, I need B to be 0, and I need C to be 0. So um, if my function is A0, B0, C0, that means that if my input is 0, I have a 0 not ended with B is 0, not, and C is 0, not. So this is going to be 1, ended with 1, ended with 1, which gives me a 1. Now, um, this is only going to be true for this first case when inputs are 0, 0, 0. Because if I plug in these inputs 0, 0, 1, this would be 0, not, 0, not, 1, not which evaluates to 1 and 1 and 0, which will give me a 0. Same story for this case. This is going to be 0 not, 1 not, 0 not, which gives me 1 and 0 and 1, which will be 0. So actually, all of these are going to evaluate to 0 down the entire truth table. And the only one that's going to be true is this first case here, if my function is defined as a not, b not, c not. So that means that um, this term right here is the first min term. And this is a min term that corresponds to inputs a equals 0, b equals 0, c equals 0. And the definition of a min term is it's the product term that evaluates to 1. Okay, so let me write that for you. The min term is product of literals, i.e. like A, B naught, C, um, whatever your inputs are, either complemented or uncomplemented, that evaluates to 1. Okay, so let's make a list of all of the min terms and we'll give them uh, their own numbering. So let me do this example again. We'll make a bigger table this time. So for 0, 0, 0, we saw that f would need to be a0, b0, c0 in order to get a 1 on the output. If our inputs are 0, 0, 1, um, then our min term would be not, not, and this one's not complemented. If we have input 0, 1, 0, we would have a0, b, c0. If our inputs are 0, 1, 1, we would have a0, b, c. If our inputs are 0, 1, 0, 0, we would have a, b0, c0. 1, 0, 1 would be a, b0, c. And you're probably starting to see a pattern here. So wherever we have um, a 0 input, um, our min term is going to have that input complemented. And then wherever we have a 1 input, that input's not going to be complemented. Okay, so these are actually um, the min terms, and we can label these as this is min term 0, this is min term 1, this is min term 2, this is min term 3, 4, 5, and so on. Um, so I'm going to put these as the min terms. And these are basically the function definitions that f would need to be in order to give us a 1 at each one of these particular cases. Um, now this notation is, this should be a lowercase m with a subscript starting at 0. And for this case, it's going to go to 7 because we're going to have 7 um, input combination cases. So we can go ahead and finish this. a, b, this would be c naught and this would just be A, B, and C, and this is min term 6, and this is min term 7. Um, so if I were to, um, the other term I need to tell you about besides min terms is um, I use this word literals. 
So literals is referring to like these numerical values that we use to denote our inputs. And these can be um, complemented or uncomplemented, but basically this product of literals here, the A's, the B's, the C naughts, whatever, give us the min terms. And the way we determine which ones are complemented is basically for our input row, whichever, wherever you see a one, you don't complement, wherever you see a zero, you complement. So let me know if you have questions in the next video. We'll use this new terminology to um, define the sum of products form.